churches that are not open and who knows when they're going to be open. I was um, a little bit distressed this past week because some of the churches out in California had appealed to even the Supreme Court for the right to be able to get back. Now they have allowed the churches to open up with some restrictions. They're not allowed to have, I guess, more than 25% of their normal number of people in the sanctuaries and they can't have any more than a hundred people in a sanctuary. Well, if you've got a sanctuary that will seat thousands of people and you're only allowed a hundred, so they kind of filed a suit to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court came back on the side of the government and said that, yeah, they could end up limiting the church sizes and I feel bad for those churches. So we're grateful that we could be here um, we do need to continue to pray for our country. These are not only with the COVID, but all the rioting that's taken place. And we just need to pray that the Lord will help help us because we definitely need help. Let me comment on some of the needs that we've got listed in our bulletin. A week from tomorrow, Chuck is going to have surgery to hopefully take care of this pain in his leg. We pray that it's going to be a success. Also in that first column, Hank has a surgery coming up. He doesn't know when yet, but he's got to have a surgery to get his bladder taken care of, and we just pray that the Lord will take care of him. He's supposed to go back to work this week. We just pray the Lord will keep him safe. Wayne Kemp, it's good to have Wayne's sisters here as well as Wayne's wife, but those three ladies sitting back here with Darlene, um, they beat Darlene up. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. like the worst part of it. They know that. <laughs> Darlene is doing much better. Uh, she had to fall in, in her garage and uh, she actually had to go to Pittsburgh. And I went last Sunday afternoon and picked her up. And uh, other than a little bit of soreness, she's really doing well. She's been back out on the mower mowing grass. But um, she had good news about Wayne. Day before yesterday, she got a chance to see him for the first time since March the 11th. And uh, Wayne still has a long way to go. Um, in a week from this coming Friday, they're going to do surgery on Wayne's vocal cord to hopefully give him the ability to speak again. He can. He has a hard time talking, so he needs prayer for that. And then sometime after that, they want to take his trach out. So do keep Wayne and um, Darlene both in prayer. Also, at the bottom of the first column, Greg Whitkey, Clyde's brother, he got good news. He did not have COVID. It almost took a week to get the results back on his test. But he did not have COVID. He just had the flu. In the middle column, continue to pray for Lonnie Riggs because his cancer is stage four. Eleanor LaRue, she had a treatment on Friday, and it ended up going well. She continues to need prayer. Tim and Delpha, Tim had a really bad day yesterday. Uh, he had the chemo two days before that, and uh, he said that even today he's really struggling. So do keep him in prayer. This week, his wife, Delpha, is going to have scans done to see how much brain activity is going on. It would be wonderful if they got some good, exciting news. It's so depressing to Tim to stand there and have to do everything for his wife all the time, and she not really even being able to communicate. Now, he does say occasionally she will end up squeezing his hand if he asks her to. But um, Tim is really struggling. And Tim, we pray that you're going to be okay. We're praying too that, that your daughter Lacey, who also had to go for some tests, that she's going to get good news. They don't know what's going on with his daughter Lacey's stomach, but we just pray that Lacey's going to be well. Do, do keep them in prayer. In the middle column also, Larry Cook on the 11th of June is going to have quadruple bypass. So he needs our prayers. Aaron, Jim, that I've already mentioned out in New Mexico, do keep those people in prayer. In the last column, Alicia Benson. She really needs to have an appointment in Pittsburgh uh, this week, but supposedly they've got Pittsburgh shut down. And she has lost, according to Hank, she has lost 30 pounds with this problem of eating. She's got a problem from the esophagus to her stomach. She really needs to get there to see a specialist. So do keep Alicia in prayer. Uh, of course, we want to keep in prayer the riot situation. 
we have added on Wednesday night Mark Darty. This is Michael's brother. He's out in Arizona. He does have COVID. His brother works at a nursing home. And um, his brother is, they were close to having to put him on a ventilator, but they were able to give him a plasma treatment. Is he making progress? He's, make, he's making little progress. He's still not. He's still having a rough time of it. Yeah. So Mark Darty, keep him in prayer. Also, Michael's mother, Mary Ann, has been having some issues with her stomach, and we pray that she's going to be okay. Uh, Bob Ohl, Robert Ohl, um, this is Becky's brother. This week he's going to have a cornea transplant. transplant. So we pray that that's going to go well. She also, his son, Bob Jr., was going to be traveling. And then Becky has had some issues with her heart. She's also had a problem with falling. I guess the heart right now is doing okay, but you're falling and you're also dealing with migraines, yeah. bad headaches. Now the, well, head, pain in the head, it's not migraines, but it's pain in pain the head. In the head. They think it's the blood thinners doing it to me. Okay. Well, we, we, we want to pray for you. And then last but not least, uh, Junior Sheets. Last week we talked about Ed Sheets who had died suddenly. 67 years of age and uh, this is another sheets um, they call him junior sheets he was on a ladder fell off broke his back had some other injuries he's going to need a lot of rehab and when i broke his hip so junior sheets are there additional names or needs turtle my wrist is kind of been hurting me there but okay all right He wants to tell his story of why his wrist is hurting. It's because of the big fish that he caught this past week. No. <laughs> uh, no. He, he did actually catch a fish. It's four pounds and six ounces. So. It's a carp. It's a carp. It's a carp. Right. Are there any other prayer requests? Diane. It's not a prayer request. I have a question. I'm looking at this list. I'm sorry. I haven't been here so I don't know. Hilda Rouse. Is it Connie and Hilda? Does Hilda have uh, somebody named Connie in her family, Jean? Is it Hilda and Connie Rouse? They have to do two more tests before they schedule the uh, surgery. For which, for Hilda? Hmm? For Hilda? A Hilda. And Connie's gone there because she takes care of her. Okay. All the treatments. Okay, thank you. Sorry. And the surgery for Hilda is and cancer? It's, really bad. it's cancer, though? So, is that helpful? <clears throat> okay. I'm glad that you asked. Anytime that you have a question, no one hesitate to ask. Well, let's let's do pray together. Father, we always take time in our service because we're a smaller congregation. We can do it to, to talk about the needs. We're a tight knit family, and it's good, Father, to be back here. We do ask for your protection. Father, we pray for those that have been ravaged by both the COVID and then the, the cities around our country that have been filled with violence and rioting. And Father, we these are perilous times and we're grateful that we could come into your house and call upon you and ask for your help because we definitely need your help. Please, Father, meet the needs that we have. We're grateful for your goodness. Again, we're grateful that our area has really been spared and we just pray that you might continue to spare us. Bless those that are in care facilities, Father, that both the staff, residents, patients, that, Lord, you will meet their needs, and even the family members. I know that it's been a very tough time for Darlene with Wayne being up at Weirton for two and a half months not being able to see him. So, Father, we're just looking to you and thanking you for what you're doing, but also praying that you'll meet our needs. I don't want to go back through the list that I've just gone through, Father, but you have heard us as we've discussed all of these needs. And we're looking to you and asking for your blessing. Some, Father, are facing surgeries. They're facing medical procedures. And we pray that those surgeries might be successful. The procedures might be successful. The person might come through with flying colors, heal up, and be able to, to get back to normal activities. There are some that have injuries that are going to take maybe more time to heal up. But we just pray, Father, your blessing on them. We pray, Father, for those that um, have stuff going on within their life like a, a sickness that like Mark Darty that father you would 
touch him and heal him, and that you'll prevent others from coming down with this COVID. There are, Father, others that, you know, that they don't know what they're facing um, because there's, like Alicia here this morning, they know that something needs to be done, and we pray that it'll be a simple procedure, but we pray that something can be worked out so that it can get done. We're just looking to you, Father, and asking for your help and trusting that you're going to meet the needs that we have. You've always been good to us. You've always taken care, and for that we're grateful. We just pray, Father, that you'll bless us. Father, we, we pray for our leaders. We pray that you'll give them wisdom. We pray that, Father, our country might turn back to you. It's heartbreaking, Father, that during the midst of all this time, churches, for the most part, have been shut down. Father, this is a time that we really need to be falling on our faces before you and saying, Lord, please help us because we are inadequate on our own to deal with the things that we're facing. We do pray, Father, for those that are lost, that you'll speak to their hearts and help them to see their need to get saved. Because, Father, I think that too many people, especially here in America, live believing that when a person dies, they just automatically go to heaven. And that's not at all what your son told us. Your son came to tell us that he can get us into heaven. But apart from him, we'll never make it. And I pray, Father, that people might understand they really do need Jesus. And that, Father, you might send a revival into your churches that your people might preach and teach Jesus Christ. Not just to be saved by Jesus, but to live for Jesus. May our actions always reflect the lordship of Jesus in our lives, that we might live for him to please him in all that we say and do. We pray too, Father, for our law enforcement, our military. We know that in light of what's happened this past week, that there's a lot of criticism about those that are serving our public. And we just ask, Father, that you might protect them and give them wisdom. We know that at times things are done that are wrong, but we pray, Father, that you might help them, Father, at this time to do what's right, that you might protect them and use them to bring law and order back to our land. We do pray for, our, again, our leaders, that you will give them wisdom. And, Father, I do pray that you might give me the words that need to be said this morning. Help us, Father, to take your word to heart, that your word might light our path and guide us as we go through life, that we might live for you. We love you. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for this time. Use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.